Welcome to the studio. I'm the computer key artist. I'm Eric Jensen. I just wanted to do a little intro about me as an artist, as a computer key artist, so you can understand where I'm coming from. As an artist, we're kind of complicated people. We have so much that influences us, and people don't see that, and so I just wanted to kind of include uh, YouTube, so that's why I started this YouTube channel to kind of show my story, talk about my story, so that you can see where I'm coming from. People ask me, why do you use computer keys? I say, why not? Because computer keys are so cool. They're just so awesome. And just how they sound is so cool. They're, these are all recycled. I have recycled companies all over, so I take them and recycle them. I'll talk to you a little bit about that. But these keys, are there's so much history in them. And some are taller and some are shorter. See how some have longer backing, some are shorter. And just depending on the, the year and the brand has a factor. All these colors right here are all from the same dye batch. And some of the dyes, they don't dye and some do. So like dye, it's the coloring. And so it's been so fun to see how it works. So I love computer keys. Um, I love the connection that people have with computer key. That when you see a computer key, you're connected to it because we all have a computer key at home and we all have that connection. And so I love to use it because I have that connection, instant connection. Because when you see it, you, you automatically know what I'm doing. Whereas, and some art mediums, like oil paintings or watercolors, some of you may have done it, some of you have not. And when you see a famous painting that's in uh, watercolor or oils, we think, why is it so famous? You don't really have that connection with that medium. And so it's harder to understand why it's such a hard medium. Oil is actually a very hard medium to work with. So I like to use something that people are connected to. I've always been drawn to uh, mixed media using garbage or things that are not valuable and try to make them valuable. So I like to play off of that. All my computer keys are been dyed. So I dye them and there is a rather complex, there's a heating, dyeing, and there's, it's a pretty uh, intensive process to be able to get them to color. So I dye them so that I can still have the lettering. If I paint them, then it covers up the letters. So I dye them so that I can get all those colors. And you can see all those colors back though. Those are all my different colors I have. Those are some of them. I have more. But it just depends on how long they stay in the dye and that has a big factor in it. So I talked earlier about that I get my key computer keys from recycle company and I get them all over because recycle companies in the US we can't recycle the plastic because they've been contaminated and as an ABS well some plastic has used ABS but with other plastics so all the keyboards are made from different kinds of plastic so it's not the pure plastic so you can't take it back and melt it because it's not they're all different in their own way and each company and brand, that kind of stuff, all have their own kind. So you can't really melt them back because it's not pure. And so I like to take them. I buy some for really cheap. I just buy a big pallet of like 500 of them. And then I take them, clean them. I also take them apart so I can um, take out the metal inside of them so that we can recycle that. So I try to recycle it as much as I can so that I save up from the landfill. Because I really don't want them recycled in there. And we go through a lot of keyboards in the world. There's so many. I actually get more keyboards than I will ever use. And it's kind of sad, but it's okay. It's just part of the art. But that I can recycle and take these things and make art out of something that is not valuable and make it into something more valuable. When I'm doing my art, I'm often reminded that it laying them one by one or putting them one by one I'm reminded that I have to be patient and that when I start my art when I start my design I don't see the whole thing but I kind of have this idea or a vision that I want to make work and I use pixelation so maps but it kind of helped me start the measurement to get it right 
but I usually change the colors. So I do have a pixelation, but the colors are not correct. Uh, some are correct, some aren't. So it changes depending on the artwork. But I, I'm often reminded one by one to be patient and that over time a whole picture will be revealed. And I, when I do my art, I ha I'm a professional myself. And so I'm always trying to, you know, I worried about that little thing. And so this art, medium for me has been so good to learn how to take a step back and just do one at a time if, and maybe one key is slightly crooked it's impossible to keep them all straight or some keys are uh this the way they were dyed is kind of weird or it's blotchy i just have to remind myself that it's going to be okay as a whole picture you won't be able to see it but when you see the whole art artwork you can't see that but up close, you may see the imperfection. And so it's been a good way for me to uh, work on my imperfection to let it go and just do one key at a time. And overall, the whole picture will reveal itself. And I think life is like that, that the whole picture will reveal itself. In all my artworks, I have quotes in them. And so I put hidden words in there. And when I do my artwork, uh, it's actually boring down, so I have an implant and it comes off. But I'll talk about that in another uh, video. But anyway, so I I like to put quotes and things that I've been thinking about. So while I'm laying it, I don't wear my implant and I'm in my silence world. I have time to think and ponder. And so I usually put things in there. And I've noticed that my artwork has become a journal. So I write things in my artwork that I've been thinking about or the thoughts that I've been thinking about. So it's been really interesting to see that process of my uh, recording my thoughts in my artwork. I'm more interested in the process of my artwork rather than the, the, the design or the picture that I'm working on. I'm more interested in the process of working one by one and the dying and making them all work together. You'll notice in my videos, I end my videos by saying, love your guts. Um, I'm, I was born deaf, and so sign language is a big part of me and who I am. And in this ASL culture, oh, in the sign language, in the deaf community, uh, I love you. It's I, or I, L, and Y. That's what it stands for, I, L, L, Y, I love you. And in that culture, this sign is not... Um, it doesn't mean as much in English. I think in English when you tell somebody, I love you, it means I want to kiss you, I love you, I, I have feeling for you. But in the yeah, deaf culture, I, the sign I love you, I think has not a strong uh, connection to it. It's more open and I can say it to a man or to a woman or anyone and not really have feeling for that person, but just that I respect them, I care for them. And so it's a whole different uh, world that we use that sign. But anyway, so I always say, I love your guts. Because I love your guts as a respecting uh, figure, as a respected person. But And there's all these different ways that we sign. I love you dearly. Because this is a sign for dear. I love you dearly. So you'll notice in my end of my videos, I do a different way of saying I love you. I'm not saying I love you and I want to kiss you. That's not what I mean. I mean, I love you because I respect you as a person.